You can't track the impact of AI overviews on clicks and click-through rate, right? Or can you? I'll be covering that topic and more in today's episode. But before that, please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my future videos. So today I'm going to be covering my latest blog post, which is all about tracking uh, AI overviews and the impact of AI overviews on click-through rate and clicks from the search results. Now, the problem with that is that Google's not providing that data really broken out for site owners um, in Google Search Console. So right now you can't actually just go into a specific report or, or highlight a specific search appearance and see how AIOs are performing, right? Uh, there's a reason for that. I'll cover more about that later. So really site owners were kind of stuck. And um, what I did is I kind of figured out a way where you can get at the data. It's not a perfect science, but it's better than no data. So let's hop into it. So in order to track the impact of AI overviews on clicks and click-through rate, uh, what we're going to do is actually use third-party AIO data. So from tools like SEMrush, Ahrefs, Ahrefs and Systrix, um, and then combine that with Google Search Console data, right? So in order to get Google Search Console data in bulk from multiple timeframes, uh, we're going to be using the API, and I'll cover more about that soon. Um, so in order to do what we need, and I have, you know, what you'll need, tools of the trade here, um, access to third-party visibility tools. So in a perfect world, you have access to all three of the visibility tools that I mentioned before, SEMrush, Ahrefs, and Systrix. Again, we want to get AIO data from them and then combine that with Google Search Console performance data, kind of merge the two using VLOOKUP, um, so you definitely want the visibility tools. Uh, that's basically going to be your source list of queries yielding AIOs in the search results. You'll also need the ability to export query data uh, in bulk via the API. Most sites will need the API because unfortunately the, the user interface in Google Search Console uh, limits you to 1,000 rows of data. Not nearly enough for most sites, right? So. I've covered using Analytics Edge many, many times. I've written a number of tutorials on how to use that tool in Excel, and it works with Google Sheets as well. And also, Mike rolled out a free version of the tool, which is great. Um, so uh, there's no need to even pay for it if you're just going to be pulling data like that. And uh, so anyway, you could use any tool you want to export via the API. I use Analytics Edge. It's awesome um, and easy to use. So that's what I'm using for this. But again, you could use whatever you want. And then obviously you need your spreadsheet tool of choice. Um, I use Excel a lot, but a lot of people use Google Sheets. You can use either one. That's fine. In order to get started, uh, the first thing you need to do is export AI overviews from each of the visibility tools. So in my tutorial, I'm not going to cover it here on the podcast, but uh, you could definitely go to the blog post and see how to do this in each tool. It's very easy to do. You just need to make sure you're selecting the right filters, export the data. Once you export from SEMrush, Ahrefs, as well as Systrix, then you want to dedupe the data. Right, so you don't want the same query showing up multiple times. So once you dedupe the data, you're gonna have your core list of queries that yield AIOs. Awesome, right? Again, it's not perfect. You know, AIOs are dynamic. Uh, you know, some are showing up on mobile versus desktop or vice versa. Um, but at least this is gonna give you a dedupe list of queries that you that the tools have picked up that are yielding AIOs. You can go back in later and actually check this or check it before if you want to, just to see if they actually are triggering AIOs. You will find that most are, um, that are being reported by the tools. So you have that list. The second thing that you wanna do is, so you have that spreadsheet now, or that worksheet, I should say, in that spreadsheet. The next thing you wanna do is export Google Search Console data across two different timeframes. AIOs rolled out officially in May of 2024. So the cool part with that is in Search Console, you have 16 months of data. You have data from before AIOs rolled out and then after. So it kind of works out perfectly there. So what you want to do is export all of the query data for the current time frame. I would say do like the past month. Um, that will give, you know, for a lot of sites that'll give you a lot of da uh, data. And also, I just want to throw out there that this works best with sites that have a lot of visibility and a lot of traffic from Google 
for smaller sites, you may find that this process I mapped out doesn't really yield too much. Um, again, why it'd be awesome if Google provided it, but they don't. So uh, anyway, export all query data for the current time frame. Again, I would say the past month. Then choose a month in the past if you want to choose it before May of 2024. So like April of 2024, that would be cool. That will give you now um, all the query data before and after AIO is rolled out. Um, and then what you want to do, so then you're going to have a spreadsheet with the deduped query data for that are yielding AIOs. Then you're going to have two additional spreadsheet uh, worksheets, I should say. Uh, that's the two time frames of query data, right? But now what you want to do is combine those three. And the way to do that is by using VLOOKUP magic. Um, I provide more information about VLOOKUP in my post here. Um, I actually provide the formula right here for clicks. Um, and I explained that you can actually tailor this formula for uh, click-through rate and position and everything like that. So um, once you do this, what VLOOKUP is going to do, and you're going to add this to the worksheet with queries that yield the dedupe list of queries that yield AIOs. Um, if you add this formula, it's going to look at the other worksheets and then actually pull in performance data when there's a match on that query. Okay, so you have all the queries in the, the other worksheets, but the deduped query list, that's where it's going to pull in the performance data. So you can start to see clicks current time frame, clicks previous time frame, which could be before AIO is rolled out, um, or any time frame in the past that you want to check. It's going to pull in uh, position uh, as well as click through rate. So you're going to have a really good amount of data there to start to take a look and see what's going on. Um, so then, you know, apply those formulas, the VLOOKUP formulas to the entire column for each of those metrics. Um, and then what you also want to do is I added um, basically columns to check the difference in clicks, the, the difference in click through rate, the difference in position, Again, that helps you start to identify queries where position stayed the same or about the same, but click-through rate dropped and clicks dropped heavily, right? Um, so, you know, what I did was here in this, this is just a screenshot of some of the queries where position was stable and click-through rate radically dropped, right? I mean, for some of these, I think the highest was 80% it dropped. Some are 78%, 50%, 60%, 40%. And again, this is position being stable. So right around the same position and click the rate dropped. And these are four queries that yield AI overviews. So again, it'd be perfect if Google would let us see this in Google Search Console, but they're not showing us that. So this is at least a way to kind of gauge the impact in click through rate and clicks. Because I've had a number of sites reach out to me and go, hey, our visibility looks pretty good, but we're seeing less traffic from Google. Well, you know, if you start to dig in and you see that a lot of uh, these queries are yielding uh, AI overviews, unfortunately, AI overviews provide a lot more information to the user with a number of sources. It's not like having a featured snippet anymore or just a number one ranking. Um, so this is a, a pretty good way at getting at that da uh, data. Um, then at the end, I provide some tips and recommendations. Um, again, make sure that, you know, you're looking at a position that's stable. For example, if a site gets impacted by a major algorithm update and let's say drops or surges, the average position for that query could change radically, which would radically change click-through rate and clicks. So you really want to look for queries where the position in the previous time frame and current time frame are about the same. Like I explained earlier, uh, this process works much better for sites with a lot of visibility and search traffic. Uh, so again, if you have a smaller site that isn't as visible in search, this process may not work that well. But I would still run, run the numbers. You may find queries where maybe it's a more popular query for your site where you can start to see data across the previous and current time frames and see that drop and click through rate. Uh, the other thing that you could do is if you find queries where click-through rate has dropped and clicks have dropped, you can actually um, export maybe monthly over the you know 12 month time frame or more. Um, and then you could chart that in Excel um, if you wanted to or uh, Google Sheets and, and see that 
you know, trending over time, which would be interesting to see. And listen, you may see an increase. I'm not so sure you will, but you might if, you know, you're having, an, you know, you're in an AIO and maybe you're the number one source that's cited there. Maybe you're going to have an increase. Um, what I'm seeing a lot is a decrease, um, which does make sense because there's a lot more information and a lot more sources. And the other thing that I recommend doing is spot checking the SERPs, right? So check the search results. You may see different SERP features there. You may see different treatment of the AI overview. Maybe you see uh, different visuals and videos there, or whatever it may be. Um, I would definitely go in and start checking what's there. It could explain why you're seeing more of a drop uh, for certain queries than others. Um, and definitely don't just run this analysis once. I recommend doing this periodically. Um, you know, as AIOs continue to roll out, and now they've rolled out to 200 plus countries and 40 plus languages, um, you could see more of an impact over time. And then who knows, maybe if an AIO was triggering for a query and now doesn't, maybe you see a surge there in clicks and click through rate. Um, again, you won't know until you really start checking it. Uh, the other thing that I just wanted to um, mention is, you know, th the reason that I think Google is not providing this data. And it's not shocking, right? I think that um, they're wording things very carefully, like they're sending traffic to a more diverse set of publishers, not saying more traffic, just to a more diverse set of publishers because click-through rate and clicks are dropping. And it's a we're in a different search world now with AI overviews and AI mode is starting to roll out. We don't have data in Google Search Console yet. Um, it should be coming soon, but that will also be mixed in too. Um, the 10 blue links da data, featured snippets data, and AIO data. So I'm not so sure having AI mode um, data there is really going to help anything because you're not going to know that it's even from AI mode. And again, I believe this is by design, right? Google just doesn't want people to say, hey, we ranked in an AI overview or in AI mode and our click-through rate was 1% or less. Um, depending on what's going on and what people are searching for. So, so that's it. So I, what I would love for you to do is actually run the numbers. You could do this relatively quickly. I mean, there's some you know, work that you need to do with setting up that initial spreadsheet with the formulas and using VLOOKUP. Once you do that, you can use that, just save it as a copy and use it um, for, you know, over time for different websites you have access to. And I'd love to hear what you're seeing. I've run this now across a number of uh, clients and sites um, that I've worked with, and it's been really interesting. For some sites, um, you could see a pretty big drop in click-through rate for important queries. For others, it's not so much. And then again, for sites that just don't have a ton of visibility, it's very hard to get this data for it to, you know, between filtering going on in Google Search Console and just not a lot of data in the visibility tools for those sites, it's been tough. Um, but I'd love to hear what you find. And so ping me on X or LinkedIn or send me an email or whatever. Um, and if you need help with this, I could always um, answer questions online as well. So that's it. Until the next episode, I appreciate you watching. Definitely subscribe to my channel and I will see you soon.